What's up guys? Well, I got another 3D printer review for you. This time I have the Creality Ender 3 V2 printer. It's one of the most popular budget 3D printers. Well, technically the Ender 3 Pro is the most popular, but the V2 is basically the same printer, but with some upgrades. Previously, I have reviewed printers by Anycubic, the Mega S and the Mega Zero, which are over there. They're both are really great printers, but I've had my fair share of problems with both of them. The most recent issue with the Mega S is the connector for the heated bed basically melted away from the motherboard. Probably not the greatest thing. So yeah, as I mentioned in my other videos, never let your 3D printer run when you aren't home. Anyway, something I will say is Anycubic has been excellent for their customer service, and I'm not sponsored by any company, Anycubic or Creality. I have a few thousand hours logged on the Mega S, so it's been decently reliable except for the motherboard issue and replacing the extruder a few times, but it does produce good prints. So I was very curious to see how well the Ender 3 would be since it's so popular. There are lots of reviews out there for it. I can confidently say or give a review on it from a user who just wants to print and not mess around too much with the printer itself. I've had the printer now for over two months and I've logged a substantial amount of hours on it, not to mention many, many rolls of filament. For this review, I'll do a list of positive and negatives to keep it simple, starting with, well, the positives. The price. I got the Ender 3 V2 on Black Friday for under, I think it was 300 Canadian dollars, including free shipping from uh, Comgrow a reseller for Creality. Uh, it did take over a month after ordering before I received it because they oversold them and I had to wait for a shipment direct from China. Mm, not cool, but anyways, whatever. Next, the extruder. I really like that it's open and you can see what's going on with the filament. It makes loading the filament a breeze and troubleshooting fairly easy as well. It's got a carbordium heated glass bed with a special coating that is supposed to release the prints after it cools. The print quality is excellent right out of the box. I was able to get exceptional prints with no messing around. And the assembly took about an hour and was fairly easy. Also uh, on the included SD card is a video on how to assemble it for those who want to watch a video. The printer, uh, it's got a larger overall print area than the Anycubic Mega S coming in at 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. Something I really like is there's lots of aftermarket support and parts can be purchased from Amazon or AliExpress. And I already picked up an extra metal extruder just as a spare because I know that will eventually wear out. Now, this printer is very popular and with that comes a large community of people using it um, and sharing lots of their experiences information. So it's easy to find answers to common problems. My printer did come with thermal runaway protection enabled, something that I deem is quite important. And I tested it so I can confirm it works, but just don't take my word for it. Your printer might be different. It might have a different firmware, so do your due diligence. The control panel is newer than the Ender 3 Pro and it works well and it's pretty responsive. Although I do prefer the Anycubic touchscreen over it. The other weird thing with this printer or the panel is with OctoPrint plugged into it, because I do use OctoPrint, the panel stays powered on even when the printer is powered off. So that's kind of weird. Uh, also next to the control panel is a storage bin right here, um, which is nice, but it's nothing to write home about. Uh, I like the ability to tighten the belts with the um, included adjusters. So this is useful. A big thumbs up for this. On to some really important stuff. This printer has the very quiet TMC2208 stepper motor drivers, whereas the Ender 3 Pro doesn't. Uh, this I really like as the printer is super quiet. As you can see, it's printing behind me. So that kind of gives you a sense of really how loud it is. Hopefully it's not too distracting. The last uh, positive on my list is the resume print function. I was able to save a 12 hour print when I lost power about nine hours into a print. So I'm sure there are more positives, but these are the ones that stood out to me. So let's move on to like the negatives. 
the glass print bed can well be shifted when taking off a print and it's happened to me a few times and while not a huge deal it is annoying i could add some extra clips um, but i just never got around to it yet so it's not a big deal but it's a little annoying the coating on the glass print bed as i mentioned before it's got that coating that uh, releases the prints after it cools but in my opinion after testing it a bit it doesn't work as good as the any cubic but it'll wear out anyways so i just prefer to use blue printers tape on it or capped on tape if I want a smooth print bottom. Now the y-axis on this printer is a little, I'll say wonky. I would prefer eight millimeter steel linear rods instead of the rubber rollers on the bottom. Um, and the way to tighten it, it's a little bit weird, but eh, it works. So uh, the extruder or the filament in hole to the extruder is not in the most ideal place because the placement of it is right by the Z lead screw. And that's a little bit weird as it can, it's like right by the extruder. So it can get in the way when loading filament. And also the filament, you know, you could have a chance of touching the rod and getting some grease on it. Not ideal. You could fix it by printing off a little thing just to cover it. I just never bothered getting around to doing it. So my second last negative is the filament holder. Now the filament holder, um, the, the roll can fall off as the retaining lip is not very high. So uh, I printed off a larger lip, problem solved. Minor, still a little annoying. I did have a roll fall off on me once, so that's why I kind of fixed that. Okay, and the last negative is the hot end isn't very big on the Ender 3. As it takes a while to get up to working temperature, um, like much longer than the, compared to the Mega S. So that could limit the types of filaments that can be printed. But I only print like PLA and PETG, so it's not really a big deal for me, but it might be to you. Uh, let me just grab the hot end so you can see the difference. All right, so here's the difference. You can kind of see here. Ender 3, the Anycubic Mega S. So let's conclude this review. I'd recommend getting the Ender V2 over the Ender 3 Pro or the regular Ender as the V2 comes with the TMC2208 silent stepper drivers and a few other upgrades that are nice, like the belt tighteners, um, there's an upgraded power supply, and the color control panel. But it might not be worth it to you if you already have an Ender 3 Pro as the like base printer itself. It's still kind of that budget base frame and everything um, you know it's the same printer so yeah it depends if you don't have a printer I think it's worth getting it with the upgrades so the prints from this printer have been coming out beautiful the layer lines are like perfect um, no issues with over or under extruding the print resolution is similar to other printers in this price range and I was able to print down to 0.1 millimeter I verified it using the Maker's Muse clearance and tolerance gauge. The assembly of this printer took just under an hour and it was really easy to do. And like I mentioned, there is a video that you can even follow on the provided SD card. So this printer paired with OctoPrint, which as I mentioned, I like using. This printer has been working flawless for over two months. So I feel I've given this printer a good amount of use and feel confident to be able to, um, yeah, give you a decent review, hopefully, at least from just a regular user point of view. I don't like really do a ton of 3D printing. That's not what my channel's about, but I do like sharing products that I like and that I think are good. I'll mention one thing about support. I don't really know what support with Creality is like as I haven't had any issues with this printer, but eventually I'm sure I'm gonna need support because these printers, well, it's not if, but they will break down. But the beautiful part of having a printer that is very popular is parts are easy to get. Overall, yeah, I would give this 3D printer a buy if you were looking for a printer with excellent print quality at a budget price. So hopefully you enjoyed this review and give it a thumbs up if you did. Well, I think I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.